Hello students, so we are in our third lecture for this particular module. What we have done till far is we have completed the LJ potentials and we have also seen how to write out the intermolecular potentials for non-spherical atoms. Now what we will do in this current lecture, we will see the application. Okay. So we know that Virial equation of state application is set for other than ideal gas condition. So the current lecture will focus on the engineering application of Virial equation of state. So what we will see the engineering application. So engineering application means where are these Virial equation applied. So as you know, mostly in the field of hydrocarbons, let us say we can use it in the case of natural gas, methane, natural gas is one of the application or those gases which are compressed under high pressure and temperature. The behavior of those gases, we can use this real equation of state. Then we will also see the conventional equation of state and we try to relate the combining rules from the conventional equation of state with those the virial equation of state coefficients. Then we will see one, two of the problems. So till now what we know is if we want to write out the virial equation of state, we write it till the second virial coefficient which is B2 and we have also obtained that this B2D that is the virial coefficient is a function of temperature where rho is the density. So this equation we can use only for relative dilute gas or vapor phase because we are not considering the other coefficients B3, B4. So please keep in mind that this equation works well for dilute gases. So it should not be used for high pressure systems or temperatures and pressures which are close to such that the fluid may condense into a liquid. So you should not use in that such type of application. So it means that if I add these higher order terms that is B3, B4 likewise, then it can improve the predictions comparable to that of dense gases because that is what we want because dense gases only we want the predictions. But uh, you know this is very difficult to obtain because if I add this additional term B3T rho square, uh, this particular term will need a cluster integral, right? Cluster integral, if you remember, that is your beta 3, those type of expressions which is you know is very difficult to evaluate. So what they do is primarily they fit the experimental data to obtain the virial coefficients. So if we want to write out the virial equation to consider all the terms we have, let us write the virial equation by considering all the terms, let us expand that virial equation. So if I want to expand that virial equation of state, I will write in terms of P by rho kT. This is what we have to write every time when we talk about expanding the virial equation. So P by rho kT, you know, I will write in terms of first B2T rho plus B3T rho square plus B4T rho cube plus likewise you can write so many terms. Let us say I write another term B5, B5T rho 5 then B6 T rho 6 plus B7 T rho 7 plus dot dot dot. So the issue is this is the equation we know if we expand the virial equation of state. So now what we will do we try to neglect the higher order terms. So if you want to neglect the higher order terms we need to have an assumption. So the assumption here is that we can write an expression in terms of exponential expansion if we write like this e to the power of lambda rho write like this you know this is equal to lambda rho plus 1 by 2 factorial into lambda rho whole square plus 1 by 3 factorial into lambda rho whole cubed plus 1 by 4 factorial into lambda rho whole 4 like that. So now you see if I can somehow you know from here onwards because this lambda 5, lambda 6, lambda 7 all these. So can I just 
write a simple exponential term after b5 and pre multiply it with this e to the power of lambda rho it will i think do the same job as per the higher order term summation so i will use this expression let us suppose this expression number 2 this expression number 1 so i can substitute this particular expression expression 2 into the terms which attached after b5 so what will i get i will get something like this p by rho k t equals to 1 plus the second virial coefficient remains same third is also the same sorry this is b3 b3 t rho square plus b4 t rho cube it is same but after this b5 t instead of writing rho to the power of 4 we will write rho to the power of 4 then we will write a factor which factor is this this factor it means this entire terms if multiplied by this e to the power of lambda into rho will give the same expression as per the remaining higher order terms so i will just multiply this by e to the power of lambda rho now, this is the way we can crop or we can stop the equation so these are also known as the extended vdl equation these are called the extended vdl equation but again not much of use not much of use is it of use no why because the answer is obvious these coefficients is very difficult to get so what is the solution so a solution is we use some of the conventional equation of state and try to relate their constants with composition let us see how we do that so there are some other extended virial equation prior to that a and b values expression let us also explore the other forms of extended virial coefficient one of the most common extended virial equation is the benedict webb rubin this is very important equation of state this you will find in many such commercial simulators or process simulation packages such as aspen if you go to the drop down menu where thermodynamic method needs to be chosen in the setup sub menu you will see these models will appear you will have this van der waals you will have peng robinson you will have srk you will have benedict bwr or benedict webb rubin then you will select any of this equation of state and you go ahead based upon what your application is so this benedict webb Web rubin equation is written as again we write p by rho kt all the expression will start with p by rho kt p by rho kt 1 plus then you have the constants b minus a by rt minus c by rt cube rho now see here this is something we call b2 into rho so b2 they have written in terms of constant capital b a and c this capital b a and c needs not to be confused with the van der waals equation of state which is small a b and c okay so these are different constants then you have this b now you have the small b then a by rt into rho square okay then plus a into alpha rt rho to the power of 5 then you have the last term that is beta rho by rt cube 1 plus gamma rho square into exponential into exponential you have minus gamma rho square yes so it means this exponential minus gamma rho square it is evident that is to account for the remaining terms so you had number of constants you see b a c b small b then a small a then you have this gamma see all these are fitted all these are fitted to exponential data for example if you select them in aspen what it will do uh, you want to use it in let's say for hydrocarbons let us suppose you want to find out the volume in the case of methane which is underground having high pressure and temperature so what they have done is they have used lots of experimental data 
for similar type of system let us say hydrocarbons and based on the hydrocarbons they have obtained and regressed this data B, A, C, etc. So, those data and this constant you can always see when you approach this particular simulator. So, this is one expression for the Bennett Webb-Rubin. Then there is a Bender equation is also there. What is the Bender equation? So, Bender equation is again you have pressure term is equal to P by rho T. Then you have number of temperature dependent terms 1 plus B rho plus C rho square plus D rho cube plus E rho 4 plus F rho 5 plus then the to account for the remaining terms I am writing the last term. So, what is the last term here? This is the remaining term exponential minus this is another term expression rho square. Now, here for example, this B, C, D, E, F, G, H is there, H, all this are function of temperatures. For example, if I want to write B, how does it B look like? Again, B is something looks like this. B will be A1 minus A2 by T minus A3 by T square minus A4 by T cube minus A5 by T4. Like this, this D is also a function of temperature A9 plus A10 by T or something like that. So, you have again uh, you have C as something which is a very not a big expression A6 plus A7 by T plus A8 by T square this is C D B E is something like this E is A11 plus A12 by T then you have F F is A13 by T into G okay then you have uh, G what is G then so all are related to each other so G will be equal to A14 by T cube plus A15 by T4 plus A16 by T to the power of 5 ok. And finally, what is H? H is A17 by T cube plus A18 plus T4 plus A19 by T5. So, you see all this B, D, G, C, E, H and F they are related to each other and these are again constants A1, A2, A3 are fitted to the temperature. So, these particular thermodynamic equation of state is available in commercial simulator for you to pick ok. This is the which we call the extended virial equation. It is similar to the virial equation we just now wrote in the previous slide. So, if you see the virial equations or the virial coefficient they are always quadratic in composition because the second virial coefficient is only a function of temperature. So, the mixture virial coefficients is a quadratic in composition. So, it means if I have a component mixture of two components this B2 mix this is the similar second virial coefficient is a function of the mole fraction and temperature which is equal to the summation of the composition matrix of the components multiplied by their product of their mole fractions Xi into Xj then the the individual virial coefficient, but these are term function of temperature. So, it means the virial coefficients are quadratic in composition. So, this is true. Now, can we relate this virial coefficient with those coefficients as obtained in the conventional equation of state? So, for that we can write the conventional equation of state. The simplest equation of state we know is the Van der Waal equation of state. So, I can write down the Van der Waal equation P is equal to RT of V minus B minus A of V square ok. This is the Van der Waal equation this you are very well aware Van der Waal equation of state equation of state ok. Then you have the SRK equation of state what is the SRK equation of state the SRK equation of state is you can write down P equal to 
RT V minus B minus A. Now, this A is a function of temperature. In the Van der Waals case, A was not a function of temperature into V into V plus B. So, this is your SRK. So, SRK you know the function is swerve redley cone. Then you have others also, let us say the Peng Robinson, which is we use frequently in our calculation, P is equal to RT by V minus B minus again this A is a function of temperature. So, if I want to write down V into V plus B plus B of V minus B, okay. this is the Peng Robinson. PR equation of state in short form we call PR, SRK, VW. So, all these are not exact. Okay. So, these are not exact, but these are all cubical equation of state. So, equations are cubic in nature. So, can we write this expression in terms of volume? Can we expand this in terms of real equation of state? Let us see if we can do that. So, why are we expanding it? Because the issue is the composition dependence of the A and B parameters are not specified. You have seen in Van der Waals, SRK or Peng Robinson, A value is only a function of temperature and Van der Waals is not a function of temperature also. With composition is not dependent. So, now the issue is when you have two different atoms, you need to define those, how is their composition is defined in terms of virial coefficient. So, it should be a function of both composition and temperature. So, the equations being cubical in nature, what are those equations I am talking about? the Van der Waals, the SRK and Peng Robinsons. All of them are cubical in nature. They can be expanded in infinite series in virial form. So, if I want to expand them, I can write always like this P V by R T. Can I write like this? I can rewrite that expression B minus A to the power of T R T by 1 by V plus then this term like this 1 by v square okay like this i am writing fine now uh, issue is if i am writing like this all the expressions whether it is van der waals srk pr they can be written like this that is the first two terms will be common for all the expressions it is only the third term onwards it will be different so, if we can neglect those higher order terms, we only focus on the first two terms, then we can get some form of composition dependence. The first two terms, that is why I have written RHS, are common to the family of cubic equation. Extra terms, the series are specific to each equation of state. So, it means if I want to write down, so it is nothing but in the case of a mixture, it will be PV by RT is equal to 1 plus B2 mix into 1 by V. B2 mix into 1 by V. So, it means that B2 mix will be equal to this. So, it means I can write down this B2 mix which is a function of composition and temperature as uh, so again I am writing the expression I and J to indicate the cross terms. Okay. Then you have Xi, Xj, then you have B2 of Ij, this this is nothing but then it will be simply be equal to this B minus A by T RT. Okay, because uh, you know this particular term in case of uh, PV by RT here is nothing but 1 plus B2 mix into rho plus like that. So, this is rho. So, I can then compare B2 mix and this. So, that is what I have done B2 mix and these are two equated. So, now I have a expression which relates the mixture virial coefficient with the constants A and B. So, I have a composition. So, I have a composition as well as temperature dependence between both two. So, let us write how to obtain this B and A. So, the equation suggests 
the previous equation suggests the right hand side of the equation shall also be quadratic in composition because in the left hand side it was x i into x j. So, it is quadratic. So, the obviously the right hand side will also be in quadratic. So, it means I can write down in this case a of t function of temperature will be nothing but summation of double summation i goes from 1 to c j goes from 1 to c will be equal to x i into x j into a i j into t and I can write down b as i to j j equal to 1 to c x i into x j into b i j because if something the left hand side is quadratic you should have something in the right hand side should also be quadratic. So, I can then write this family of equation relating a and b. So, when we write these type of equations relating the composition dependence to the constants in the mixture variable coefficient. So, those are called as the van der Waals one fluid mixing rules. So, it means the mixture is described by the same equation as the pure fluid, but with the composition average parameters. Instead of only A or B, they will have these terms, quadratic terms. So, again we come to the same problem that is how we can obtain this A i j and B i j, because A i i, A j j, B i i, or B J J very easy to get because they are the pure components. But whenever we have this B I J or A I J there is the problem. So, for this again you will use the rules similar to Lorentz Berthelot. So, it means the rule is same what we have taken. So, it will be A I I plus A I J. So, if we talk A I J, so it will be something like this. or something like this that b i j will be equal to b i root of something like this you can write down. So, still the both the equations above are not exact. So, I can have different expressions so as to equate the LHS. Yeah, because see if I want to write like this, so it means that if I want to write like this b 2 I write the entire expression once more. So, this is what we are saying is I can write like this B minus A t by R t okay, where B and A t are given by this expression. So, it means, but uh, if I want to equate these two expressions I can many ways I can equate this expression. One can satisfy the equation above based on several formulation to A t and B t. It may not stop here. I can add a term, let us say a constant of a term which is uh, in x a i j into x or a i j into x i or a i j into x j I add up or I can add here another term b i j by x something like that. That will also if I add these two up will also be equal to B 2 mix. So, there can be many such solutions which can be equated to B 2 mix. The form of this expression can be many, there are many models which can fit this expression. So, they are also not exact. So, but fair enough if they are even though are not exact, they are been this one term fluid mixing rules, they are used many places and they are much known for the hydrocarbons. So, in this case what we can do? Now, let us look up the third virial coefficient. So, in the previous slide what we seen that there are many ways to satisfy the LHS and RHS. So, we have this expression B 2 mix is equal to a quadratic term expression of B i j s equals to B minus A by T. So, this B minus A by T can also be written in many terms. I can add some function term of x into the RHS and equate it. So, there may be many such equations. So, it is not exact. This also is not exact there are many solutions possible. Then let us see what is the third virial coefficient. 
the third virial coefficient you know we have already seen this b3 mix b3 mix the mole fraction and temperature is equal to now there will be three summations summation all will go to the number of components in the system so you have xi xj xk and you will have b3 of ijk into temperature so for van der waal equation if i equate the third term of that series you will get b3 mix is equal to only simply b square by 2 if i equate the first term which is nothing but b we have already found out from the previous slide it is i 1 to c j 1 to c x i into x j into b i j and whole square but sorry this is b 3 mix but b 3 mix needs to be cubical in nature is it cubical no it is 4 times you are getting so it means they are not exact so the composition dependence is incorrect because here you have mole fraction raised to the power of 4 here you have cubical so this is not exact for higher virial coefficient so you have to stop till second virial coefficient so that's why this van der waals fluid mixtures are satisfactory when dealing with species of similar chemical functionality such as family of hydrocarbons let's say methane ethane likewise but if there are similar compounds where the compound signs are different some complicated equation of states are available please refer to this book of wong and sandler's mixing rules and you will able to find those particular equation of state for other compounds so we have completed the theoretical part i will take one problem then we will stop now this problem is very interesting it says again I am coming to the GC problem because this GC gas chromatograph problem is important in the sense you add the gases. So when you add gases and you want to prepare a gas of a particular mixture you cannot just simply add it. You have to be very careful what will be the final state and based on that you keep on adding the gases. So in this case again we want to calibrate a gas chromatograph because we need to prepare a mixture of 0.7 mole fraction methane and 0.3 mole fraction tetrafluoromethane at 300 Kelvin and 25 bar. So this is your final temperature and final pressure. Okay. So I want a mixture of methane and tetrafluoromethane at this temperature and this bar in a steel cylinder that is initially completed evacuated. So we can assume this mixture can be ascribed by the virial equation using only the second virial coefficient. So no need to worry about all the third virial coefficients. And uh, but instead of Lj, now I am asking you to use the square well potential and the combining rules. So these are the square well potential. You must be aware of. So this is the lorentz bertholdt rule, arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and this is the cutoff s for short wave. Okay. So it is, you know, what is it? This is this type of relation. You have this, you have gone this, and this. So in between, you have this region as epsilon. So this is minus epsilon. This is zero, and uh, this is your R S W into sigma, and this is your sigma. This value. So this is what it means. Okay. We have given the sigma value, this is sigma epsilon and RHW, the cutoff for both the gases. Now there are two procedures we will be considering for making the mixture. One is, let us see what are those two procedures. First procedure is methane you add first isothermally at 300 Kelvin, okay. Add methane to the initially recorded cylinder until a pressure P1 is obtained. Then you add CF4 isothermally until the pressure of 25 bar is obtained. Now question is what should be P1? So as to obtain exactly the desired composition that is 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. So this composition you need to prepare. What should be P1? 
In the second case, you add CF4 again the same manner, but here you will obviously get a different pressure P2, then you add CH4 and try to make the final pressure as 25 bar. So, in the first case, what you do is, in the first case, you add CH4, go to P1, finally go to 25 bar, keeping 300 Kelvin. So, here you added CF4, but the second case, what you do, you add CF4 first at 300 Kelvin, reach P1, in this case it is P4, then you add CH4, then you keep the temperature constant at 300 Kelvin, reach the final pressure at 25 bar. So, these are the two scenarios. So, you are now asked to find out what is P1 and what is P2 and these two you are being asked to find. The final composition you know it is 0.3 and 0.7, the mole fractions. So, how do we go about? Let us see the solution. So, what is we are having? First, let us write what are the data you require. We require the Avogadro's number. So, Avogadro's number I write as Na. Na is 6.023 into 10 to the power of 23. You will need this. Then uh, you can write the gas constant. You require both the gas constants R1. Let us say I write here in terms of joules per mole per Kelvin. You should also have the value of R2 in bars. So, R2 in bar will be 83.143 bar into centimeter cube by mole into Kelvin. You need this. So, let us give some nomenclature. Let us suppose CH4 I write as 0, CF4 I write as 1 and CH4 I write as 2. Okay. So, what you what you have is sigma 0 0 you are having sigma 0 0 is 3.4 Armstrong. It means sigma I I or 0 0 0 is methane. We have this from our example and uh, sigma 1 1 we know it is for CF 4 it is 4.103 Armstrong. So, what will be the cross terms? Let us say 1 0 what will be the cross term 1 0 or 0 1 is the same. It will be the half of sigma 0 0 plus sigma 1 1 ok. Fine. So, we got sigma then epsilon by k again epsilon by k there will be 0 0 which is equal to 88.8 Kelvin then again epsilon k you will be having is 1 1, it is 191.1, again epsilon k, again it is same thing 0 1 or epsilon y k 1 0 both are same, but it will be a geometric mean, geometric means is equal to e k either 0 0 into e k of 1 1, fine. Now, your same way, I am not writing here RHW, okay. RHW that is your cutoff radius. Cutoff radius, let us say for 0, 1 is equal to 0. Again, I am making it half because I have asked you to use the arithmetic mean plus RS square will cutoff 1, 1. This is the thing you should calculate first. So, you calculate. So, I am writing here this one, calculate this one and calculate this one. Okay. So, number of components here is 2. So, temperature you know it is 300 Kelvin. Total pressure or final pressure it is 25 bar. So, x0. So, what is x0 or x of methane is given? What is 0.7? and x of CF4 equal to 0 0.3. This is also really given the final and you are given these final conditions. So, this you can say as final condition for mixture. 
Now for this case how will you proceed? The easiest way to proceed is first find out what will be the density of the final gas mixture at 25 bar pressure. So to obtain that final density you need the mixture virial coefficient and to obtain a mixture virial coefficient you need the individual virial coefficient of the individual component as well as the cross virial coefficient of both the components. So that is how we will proceed. So let us write the second virial coefficient how will you write B, Bij which is a function of temperature. So I suppose you know what you need to do you need to find out B11 so I am just writing here find out B11, find out B12 or B21 both are same, find out B22 okay when I write Bijt. So Bijt is 2 pi then again sigma ij whole cubed square well potential I am using the expression by 3 then you have the term of 1 plus 1 minus exponential of epsilon by t. So epsilon again it will be epsilon ij then in bracket you will be have r s w i j okay whole cubed minus 1. So this entire term exponential is multiplied with this term then bracket closed and then again the final bracket closed. So this is the way you will calculate B11, B12, B22. So once you calculate those values you will get the values as so B11 so in this case I may be uh, you know this is a bit uh, confusing because if I write 1 1 this will confuse with your nomenclature. So I gave this B00, B11 this is the way you can write you can calculate either B01 or B10. So 0 indicates methane so I will write there 0 indicates methane and 1 indicates tetrafluoromethane okay. So you calculate this if you calculate this you will get for the methane CH4 B2 for CH4 or which is equal to B00 this comes out to be minus 41.48 centimeter cube per mole then B B2 for CF4 is equals to B11 this comes out to be minus 86 point minus 86 point 88 and then the cross terms what is the cross term B01 equal to B10 this cross term is equal to minus 64.4 So you got all the terms B00, B01, B11. Now we can find out the mixture density. How will you find out? So you first find out the B mix. So what is B mix of the temperature? You know this is nothing but I goes from 0 to. So here you have two components basically. So I can easily write here I goes from 1 to 2. Then J will also go from 1 to 2 you have to multiply xi xj and then you have to b of t of ij. So you will have b00 into x1 x x1 square b00 plus so if I want to uh, write it down I can write here x1 square b00 plus 2 x1 x2 b 0 1 plus x2 square b uh, here 0 0 1 1 1. So this is for CF4 this is for methane this is for the cross term CF4 CH4 substitute all the values because you know x1 is 0 0.7 and your x2 is 0 0.3 take up all those values substitute you will get the final 
mixture coefficient Bm is equal to minus 55.4 centimeter cube per mole. This is the final, this you will require. So, this is the final mixture coefficient you obtain after all the calculation. Now, I am in a position to obtain the density of the final mixture. Okay. So, now find the find the density of the final mixture. Okay. It is very important. So, how will you find out? It will be simply the total pressure P by K T equal to rho T I write here final into rho T square into the mixture B2 mix. Okay? Because I need to find out rho T. So, I know this, I know P, this is equal to 25 atmospheres, I know K, I know T. So, I substitute all the values. The issue is it is a nonlinear equation. You have to find rho. Start with some initial guess. Use MATLAB initial guess of rho or I can write here. I am giving this as an assignment. You can complete this. Use MATLAB to obtain rho. If you do it correctly, your rho will be equal to something like this. 1.065 into 10 to the power of minus 3. This is the final density. Now, we have obtained the final density. So, what is the final density of methane? Final density of methane is equals to 0 0.7 because it is a mole fraction and for CF4 it is equal to 0 0.3. So, what is the final distinction here is 7.45 and this is close to 3.19. So, this you have got. Now, the density of the CH4 and density of the CF4 you have got. Okay. So, for procedure 1, now you can use this density to back calculate. For procedure 1, we start with CH4. So, obviously, in this case P1 by KT will be equal to rho of CH4 plus rho of CH4 square into B of 0, 0. And for procedure 2, P2 by KT equal to rho of CF4 plus rho of CF4 whole square into B11. Now, you know all this because you know the second real coefficient of the individual components. You know all this. So, issue is the net density we know. This is rho H4 we know. Rho CF4 is also we know. So, we know the density of the total gas. So, this is the total amount which can stay when you add methane till P1 and this is the total density of the gas it will have. So, if you have a gas, the total density of the gas will be this. So, you substitute this value here and find out P1. So, find P1. So, this P1 comes out to be close to 18.01 bar and if you start with CF4, this P2 will come out to be close to 7.7 .7 bar. So, the idea is to find the final density and from the final density, you know this density is divided based upon their mole composition. So, you know how many molecules are there when you have only methane, how many molecules are there when you have only CF4. With that, you apply the virial coefficient or the virial equation of state only on the pure component and get the total pressure. So, total pressure in the case of P1, it will be only of CH4 and in the case of procedure 2, it will only for CF4. So, this is what actually makes the use of engineering application of video equation of state. So, I will conclude this lecture here. Thank you.